Very good afternoon to everyone who has just joined us. Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you all today? Yeah, today we have a, a, bit, a few more live audience. <laughs> For those who want to uh, join in the live audience, please uh, go and hunt for the live audience ticket. <laughs> no, no, there's no such a thing. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, if anyone is selling live audience ticket, that's a con job. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so today's topic, the house is on fire. Mm. Yeah, I've been uh, wanting to write a blog about it. So yesterday, finally got my hands on. It's been uh, some time since I wrote anything uh, and on and off some students ask me like wh whether I'm going to break the dry spell and you know pen something. But as I've shared in other sessions, uh, I, I, I wrote quite a lot back in 2006 or seven when I started my uh, or rather, before that, I, I had my own blog. I wrote quite a bit here and there. And then when I switched to WordPress, I wrote quite prolifically um, a few times a month or a week. Um, and then gradually over the years, I my writing kind of dwindled <laughs> because I, I start to feel like, what else do I have to add to the conversation, you know? Yeah, the Buddha spent 45 years to teach. I think he covered very comprehensively. <laughs> yeah, and over the past 2,500, 600 over years, uh, so many masters have have shared their wisdom. Uh, what else can I add? Yeah. So, um, truth be told, today's topic is actually not new. Also, yeah. Uh, I get my inspiration from many things, one of which is uh, from two suttas. Yeah, from two suttas. One is the parable of the uh, poison arrow, and the other one is literally the, the parable of the house on fire from the Avatamkasaka Sutra, yeah, which I will go through these two in brief later on. Uh, but a bit of a shameless plug here, I'm going to read to you the house on fire. <laughs> Uh, I've shared the link, some of you may have gone on to read it. So here goes. The fire alarm went off as fire engulfed one of the units in the building. Yeah. So imagine you're in a big building and one of the units in the building is on fire. The family in that apartment scrambled to put up to try to put out the fire. Yeah. Meanwhile in other floors, other families continued with their morning ritual. One family came out to take a look and ask around, while other families kept, just kept to their own business as it was not the apartment on fire. Yeah. Uh, in, in a way, I guess, in, in a real situation like that, um, when the fire is still small, most people may not even be aware of it, so they just can't carry on. Right? So as the fire spread and smoke started to engulf the building, it became clear that everyone is going to be affected. Soon individuals started coming out to check, the, check out the situation. Now this is a fictitious story, okay? <laughs> so don't start searching the internet for uh, houses on fire. So I wrote, why is the house always on fire? Someone commented. Then another comment, their stupid father refused to let the son activate the fire alarm earlier, else the fire would have been put out already. And then the third comment, you know, I heard that it was because they were having a barbecue in the house. Yeah. More, more and more people joined in the discussion on who started fire, why it started, how it started, but very few was trying to put out the fire. Some families quickly took actions and kept the fire under control in their own place, own places, while others, too busy with speculating on the fire, discovered a little too late that their own house was on fire too. When the firefighters arrived to fight the fire, they even had to grapple with some bystanders who insists on finding out the who, what, when, where, why, how of the fire before putting it out. Now this is fortunately a, f a fictitious story, but unfortunately it's happening in real life. Yeah. If your house is on fire, put out the fire. If others' house is on fire, help them put out the fire. 
there will be time to investigate all you want now this this story (uh) I've shared before (uh) it's slightly different format (uh) but the fire is defilements the house is our mind but yes and yes it can refer to the COVID-19 pandemic as well uh, the fire is the virus the house is our own country and the building is the very earth we are in yeah let us put out the fire defilements of virus we can investigate and finger point all we want when we are done uh, so um, I, I decided to write something about this because uh, over the past uh, few weeks there are so many articles shared online um, and uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know fingers pointing back and forth all over yeah and I think it uh, can affect people's uh, uh, mood people's uh, emotions and mind yeah but I wonder whether that's the that's the most uh, practical thing to do mm. like is that actually helpful uh, at the end of the day I I'm not against investigating the how it started why it started because that's important as well I mean after all the Buddha's approach is going to the origin of things right uh, but the difference is his focus the origin of what yeah, he's, he's concerned about the origin of the of defilements not the origin of the world yeah. so in the sutta that I quote that I included if you were to look at the the link that I've shared in the Majjhima Nikaya there is a sutta called Chula Malunkya Vada so Chula is shorter uh, Malunkya Malunkyo Vada uh, so the terms is actually Malunkya the name of the person in the sutta and then Vada is like something said yeah so it's like the Sigula Bada, which is Sigulaka and then Wada. So that which is said to the to this person. Uh, and if you were to uh, look at this sutta, it's it's quite interesting. Yeah. So let me just pull it up, uh, and maybe I can share with you a bit. So uh, where is that sutta? Let me see. So, uh, in this sutta, I'm not, I'm not going to go through the whole sutta, okay? I've provided a link, you can go and read it. Uh, but there was this person, uh, in fact, he's a monk, Venerable Malunkya Putta. So, uh, Malunkya Putta, he, he had this uh, series of questions, yeah, questions about the world, yeah. And he had this thought, huh, if the Buddha do not answer my questions, uh, then uh, I will, that because he's a monk under the Buddha, uh, he's a bhikkhu. So one day he decided, you know, he, he need to get to the bottom of these questions. That if the Buddha don't answer his questions, he will then disrupt, he will go back to lay life. And the series of questions include whether the world is is finite or is it in, infinite? Is it uh, like um, is the is the is there a, is the soul and the body the same or is the soul and the body one thing and the the body the, the next? Yeah, is it separate things? Whether the Buddha will exist after he has passed away? Uh, whether the Buddha will not exist? Whether the Buddha both exists and not exists? Whether the Buddha neither exists nor not exists? So these are what we would call today like philosophical questions. Interesting, no doubt. But uh, when he went to see the Buddha, the Buddha's response was most interesting. Yeah, the Buddha asked. Uh, Lord, he he came to the Buddha and asked all these questions. The Buddha's first reply: Most people uh, would have heard about how the Buddha tell him the analogy of. Or the parable of the poison arrow uh, but before that the Buddha actually told him something very interesting yeah 
The Buddha said, Malum Kyaputta, did I ever say to you, come Malum Kyaputta, leave the holy life under me, and I will declare to you that the cosmos is eternal, or the cosmos is not eternal, or the cosmos is finite, or the cosmos is infinite, or the soul and the body are the same, or the soul is one thing and the body is another. Or, after death, a Tathagata exists. Or, after death, a Tathagata does not exist. Or, after death, a Tathagata both exists and not exist. Or, after death, a Tathagata neither exists nor does not exist. Yeah. Basically, the Buddha is telling him, Look, did I ever promise you to answer any of this question? <laughs> so, so Malinka Buddha was reply and say like, Oh, no, no lot. And then he further asked uh, Malinka Buddha, and did you ever say to me, yeah, uh, it, the, the whole block again, that you will leave the holy life under the blessed one? In other words, that he will become a monk only if the Buddha explained all this to him. Yeah, did did he ever ask the Buddha, tell the Buddha that? And then he said no. Then do you know what the Buddha said? Then that being the case, foolish man, who are you to be claiming grievances, making demands of anyone? <laughs> I tell you, when, I, when we go through the sutta, it is most interesting because it's almost like any and every possible situation you might encounter happened in the Buddha's time. Almost, not, not all, maybe, yeah, but many of this. In fact, I encountered similar situations. Where some students will come to me and say, Sifu, you must explain to me. I'm like, but why do I have to explain this to you? No, you must, you have to. <laughs> I'm like, no, I, did I ever tell you that to come and learn from me, then I'll explain this to you? No. Do you ever insist that, you know, do you ever ask of me this? I never promise you anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but so but, so this, this part is very interesting because most of the time in this sutta, we only see the front part and then the, the parable. Now this part oftentimes is gloss over. So this part is something for us to learn also. Yeah, something for us to learn. Uh, like in the context of this virus, um, the like did anyone ever promise that they will they will give you this or that answer? Doctors are not obliged to give you the answers you want. Doctors are obliged to help save your life, you know? Yeah, those are our priorities. Yeah, then in any case, uh, the Buddha then go on to, to tell him that if a person were to pursue this train of thought, the man would die and those things would still remain undeclared by the Tathagata. That means the Buddha would not answer all this. Yeah, then the Buddha gave the example, the parable, the famous parable of the poison arrow. And this is how it goes. It is just as if a man were wounded with an arrow thickly smeared with poison. Yeah, so you imagine a person being shot, okay? And then the, the poison arrow has is thickly smeared with poison, okay? The, the arrow itself. His friends and companions, kinsmen and relatives, will provide him with a surgeon. And the man will say, I won't have this arrow removed until I know where the man who wounded me was a, uh, whether the man who wounded me was a noble warrior, a Brahmin, a merchant, or a worker. So this is the first criteria. He must know who exactly it is who fired the shot. Now, if you compare this with, uh, with the current uh, COVID-19. It is like some people who keep on going on about, did it come from a bat? <laughs> huh? Did it come from China or is it from other countries? I'm like, okay, I'm sure that is important for the long term. I'm sure that's interesting to know. Yeah. But um, if, if now you're having the symptoms of COVID-19, you better go and, you know, go and see a doctor. And if you, if not, then you may want to give assistance to others. Yeah. So, um, 
in the case of the parable, this is the first criteria, and this is only the start. He would say further, I won't have this arrow removed until I know the given name and clan name of the man who wounded me, until I know whether he was tall, medium, or short, until I know whether he was dark, ruddy brown, or golden colored. My goodness, what's wrong with this person <laughs> in, the, in the parable? Until I know his home, village, town, or city, until I know whether the bow with which he was wounded was a long bow or a crossbow, until I know whether the bowstring with which I was wounded was fiber, bamboo threads, sinew, hemp, or bark, until I know whether the shaft with which I was wounded was wild or cultivated, until I know whether the feathers of the shaft was uh, with which I was wounded were made were, were those of a voucher, a stock, a hawk, a peacock, or another bird, until I know whether the shaft with which I was wounded was bound with the sinew of an ox, a water buffalo, a langur, or a monkey. He would say, I won't have this arrow removed until I know whether the shaft with which I was wounded with uh, was that of a common arrow, a curved arrow, a butt, a tooth, a calf toothed, or an oleander arrow. The man would die and those things would still remain unknown to him. Yeah. This is the gist of that the of this story. Yeah. And what hap what follows after that? Uh, basically the Buddha then go through all the different questions that he asked. Yeah. And the Buddha basically tell him that, you know, you shouldn't be pursuing all that. Yeah. That regardless of whether it's this way or that way, there is still birth, aging and death. There is the sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress and despair. Uh, which the Buddha is focused on, yeah, whose destruction I make known right in the here and now. Yeah, that's the focus that the Buddha has, to help people to be free of this whole mass of suffering. Yeah. So this is the last, after this, the, the, the parable, and there's something else here. Yeah, there's something else here, which is, um, I find present in many suttas. Many times, uh, people would come to the Buddha uh, with a question, right? And he would, they would ask, is, is it like this or like that? What I realize is, many times, people get stuck with this question. And they start arguing, they start speculating as to whether it is A or B. And you will notice, for those of you who have consulted me, whether in class or in person, you notice that oftentimes these days, over the years, I would, instead of insisting that it's A or B, even if, you know, on the subject matter, I know it's A or B, or I think it's A or B, nowadays I don't insist that it must be A or B. Rather, I would say, okay, if it's A, what is the implication? If it's B, what is the implication? And whether the implications have any implication on the question you have to begin with on what really matters. Yeah. And I find that this approach uh, helps us rethink our priorities. Yeah. What is the thing that we are tr really trying to solve? Mm. Uh, so the rest of it uh, basically goes through uh, the formula of, uh, we could say, actually the Four Noble Truths. Yeah. What is stress or suffering? the origin, the cessation, and the path leading to it. Yeah, so, if we bring this back to the, to the current situation, uh, think about it. If someone were to go to the hospital with the, uh, and get, get uh, examined, the doctors after examination would um, immediately you know, if the person starts to have symptoms that is life-threatening, the doctors would at the first instant provide medical aid. Yeah? And when the patient is stable enough, then, you know, uh, where possible, then they will go into the contact tracing. Yeah? Imagine if you are one of those with the symptoms and you are like having difficulty breathing. And imagine if they were to start like, no, 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 we, we, we cannot fix you yet until we find out 
who you hang out with, where you go. <laughs> no, I don't think they work that way also. Yeah. Uh, so it's about the priority. Yeah. But on a l much larger scale, not on an individual basis, then we see when we look at some of those, uh, in a way it's kind of like uh, rhetoric, you know? a lot of commentary on the who did what, where it happened, and, and things like that. Um, uh, as I said, I, I think at some point there is a need, there's definitely a need to do that investigation because that can help us to uh, prevent you know, similar outbreaks in future. Uh, but in the meantime, it's more helpful for us to actually work together to uh, you know, prevent the, the spread. Now the other sutta which um, I have uh, um, brought up, I have uh, with me today is the Avatam Saka Sutra, Huayanjing. So uh, as you know, the Avatam Saka Sutra is quite lengthy. Huh? Um, but within it, there's a series of parables. And, uh, or rather no, not, not Huayan Zing, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm quite a fan of Huayan Jing, I everything also Huayan Jing. This is actually not from Huayan Jing, this is from the Lotus Sutra, Miao Fa Lin Hua Jing. Yeah. So in this, uh, there's this parable of the house on fire. So I'm going to recite some verse to you and then translate for you. San jie wu an, yu ru huo zai, zhong ku chong man, shen ke bu wei. That's a series of verses, I'm just citing one part which to me is quite relevant to our situation. Yeah. So San Jie Wu An the San Jie, the three spheres of existence, Yu Jie Se Jie Wu Se Jie, the sensual desire realm, form and formless realm. Yeah. So San Jie Wu An that in all these three realms there's actually no safety. Yeah, no safety. Why? Yu Ru Huo Zai, yeah, how so? It's just like houses on fire. Yeah, but we don't see the fire. And only when it's very obvious then we see. Like now, now there's, there's this uh, pandemic, then we feel, oh, there's no certainty. Yeah, there's no uh, safety. But how about before? How about after? Uh, before and after, we feel eh, quite safe. We feel quite safe about it. Yeah. Uh, but here in the Sutra, the Buddha's wisdom, he sees that no, this world has no true safety. Temporal, yes, maybe. Yeah, but true safety, no. How? Just like house on fire. Zhong ku chong man, filled with much uh, masses of suffering. Yeah. And then there's elaboration on this mass of suffering. Shen ke bu wei. Yeah, it is truly yeah, uh, worth, uh, uh, worth for us to be fearful of. And then following verse, Chang yo shen lao, bing shi yu huan, ru shi den huo, chi ran bu xi. Chang yo shen lao, bing shi yu huan. So, shen lao, bing shi. So, birth, aging, sickness, and death. And you want the 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 this uh, uh, distress from uh, the the faults and danger of this distress of birth, aging, sickness, and death. This cyclical existence. Yeah. Ru shi den huo, shi ran bu xi. So this this series of fire. The fire here is not referring to real fire. It's a parable. Yeah. That. Our samsaric existence is wrought with this inconstancy. Uh, while we are born, we are alive, that is not certain. Anytime death can take over. While we are healthy, sickness can come anytime. Yeah. So, uh, and including the whole series of, you know, the whole mess of 
tribulation, sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair, yeah, which is highlighted in the other sutta I cited earlier. Yeah, so um, this is a this is a this is a time of uh, where we have to be extra cautious. Yeah, uh, but from this sutta, I think it can be a reminder um, that our samsaric existence itself yeah it's not something that should be taken for granted yeah that um, the uh, apart from this pandemic yeah we should reflect on the on the frailty of our life the mortality of our life yeah uh, in the sutta chang you sen lao it's not that there's pandemic then there's sickness yeah I think about it apart from the pandemic people do fall sick we do suffer from sickness yeah it's not that there's pandemic then we grow then then people die yeah, every day we think about it uh, sometime back I shared this reflection when we wake up in the morning uh, and maybe go to bed at night when you go to bed at night do you go to bed do we go to bed not you uh, do we go to bed at night thinking tomorrow I might not wake up uh, now, now we think <laughs> now, now we may have this awareness yeah uh, so this can be called the COVID-19 wisdom uh, today when you if you need to go out yeah, now if you have nothing on where possible, don't go out. Uh. Yeah. Uh, now, when we go out, we have that awareness that we may not come back. You know? Because halfway through, maybe you get a message that you, you are part of the infected cluster, you have to go for screening, and who knows, maybe you don't come back. And uh, now we have the wisdom. But in fact, even without this pandemic, there are many people when they wake up in the morning, they don't think in this way, but they leave the house, they don't come back today. This is a fact. This is not scare mon mongering, uh. yeah. Fear mongering, scare mongering. No, this is reality of life. But we live our life with that false sense of security, false sense of certainty, thinking that we we will to adjust as yesterday we were alive, today we are alive, tomorrow we will still be alive that we go out in the morning we, tonight we will come back and tonight when we sleep, tomorrow we wake up we, we think in this way I'm not saying that there's anything wrong by itself but because we think in this way there's a tendency there's a tendency that um, we, we are not so quick so ready to forgive we are more ready to hold on to our unhappiness our hatred, our anger, our grudge, our discontentment, our resentment towards others. You think about it? That day I saw this, uh, this Facebook post. Uh, it's written in Chinese. In Chinese it says, 2020年的计划今年要计划赚大钱 uh, yeah, that this is the uh, new year plan 2020 plan I want to earn a lot of money I want to do uh, I want to go traveling I want to have exercise what, what, what. then because of COVID-19 slash plan for 2020 stay alive huh? so in, in the Buddhist tradition we have this notion of uh, that sickness, sickness has, a, has two <coughs> sides. On one side, it can impede our cultivation. Because when we are sick, our, our body is not well, our mental faculty can become uh, impaired. So we cannot cultivate, we cannot practice. Yeah? And it can terminate our life. But at the same time, there's this saying, uh, "就是小病好修行." Yeah, that having some sickness is good for cultivation. Why? 
because it can, it can remind you of the frailty of our life. When you're too, when everything is too good, health is too good, yeah, your wealth is good, your relationship is good, everything is too good, then you may think, oh yeah, the Buddha's teaching, the noble truth of suffering, really man? Is that really suffering? <laughs> huh? And if you have some merit, or oh, worse still, yeah, then you start to have pride. Yeah? You start to have a false sense of certainty. Yeah? Because when you have merits, things go your way. And then you, you buy into that whole notion that you are in control. That you have, you are able to control how things happen. And then suddenly, ah, quote, this COVID-19 happened. Ah, then suddenly we are reminded, well, our, our life is uncertain. Yeah, our life is uncertain. Mm. But within this uncertainty, it's not meant to make people uh, become paranoid. It's not the aim. Is not that. Um, oh, then. Uh, then we go, go nuts, ah. Uh. Uh, but rather, you have to ask yourself. For many of, for most of us who are watching this video at this point in time, uh, you're probably well. You're probably resting at home. Uh, Take this opportunity to ask yourself whether it's COVID-19 or whether you, are, you, you fall sick for whatever uh, circumstances. Ask yourself this question. When you are sick, what is more important? Is it what that person said more important or that you can take the next breath? Which is more important? When we are healthy, we, we, we think everything is important, you know. I, I, do, I don't mean to say to, 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 to say that you are like that. Uh. I, I notice sometimes I'm like that, you know. <laughs> when I'm healthy and everything, uh, wow, like this also cannot, like that also cannot. Everything is important, you know. Wow. The, the poster must be how many percent, you know, the border must be like this, like that. <laughs> So sometimes I remember, and sometimes I look at the person, ah, can la, go. And sometimes I forget, you know. Then I will tell the volunteers, uh, do you mind, can, can you change this one, change that one? <laughs> then, then sometimes they will change. Sometimes they change one thing, then they change, they, they don't change the other thing. Uh, then it depends. If I have the, if I have the sick wisdom, not, not the sickening wisdom, uh, <laughs> but the wisdom from being sick, then I remember, okay, uh, well, good to have, but uh, important thing is good to have, not must have, not die, die, must have. Uh, if it's die, die, must have, you must have, ma. Even when you're sick, you die, die, must have, ma. <laughs> Correct or not? Uh, but many things in our life actually not die, die, must have. Uh, no. Uh, but when we are not sick, we tend to forget. So I uh, don't, not talking about you, uh, myself. Uh, maybe sometimes it applies to you, uh, then you can ask yourself, which is really more important? So sometimes I'm, I remember, and then I look at it, okay lah. Uh, okay. Uh, so take this opportunity. Don't, don't, I mean the, 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 the coronavirus put in a lot of effort to spread around. Don't let it go to waste. Use this opportunity to make our life more meaningful. Make our life focus on what is really important. Because I, I like to think that in due time, this, this pandemic, like all pandemic in the past, would come to a gradual tapering and eventual normalcy. I like to think so. I hope so. Uh, and, and if it doesn't, then all the more we need to focus on what is important, isn't it? The, 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 the trouble is, if it returns to normalcy, because if it doesn't return to normalcy, then we'll just be keenly aware, you know, of the frailty of our life. But when it returns to normalcy, 
then it's easy for us to go back to complacency and then have the everything is important mindset uh, so take this opportunity during this time um, to consider uh, whether you are sick or not sick yeah, borrow this sick wisdom yeah, don't wait until you are sick while you are still healthy ask yourself what is truly important yeah, what is truly important that's what I want to share today. So, uh, I uh, we have 15 minutes. Uh -huh. Today we have a bit more time because we start on time. So, I like to open up to the to everyone uh, to post your questions if you have. And for those who just who join us uh, over the past one hour good afternoon to you and I see that uh, Kwan Ru Fasi is online good afternoon Kwan Ru Fasi is my Si Siong Ti yeah. uh, hope everything is well Kwan Ru Fasi and let me see if there are uh, other venerables online I must apologize to the other venerables who are online I, I didn't uh, greet you all uh, on time so Okay, I think. Mm. Yeah, so, 15 minutes for you to ask questions. Uh, later on, I'd like to dedicate the last maybe 5 minutes uh, or more for us to uh, do some uh, chanting. Okay. Um, and then we can do dedication to. Um, to all the patients uh, and all the uh, medical uh, professionals, all those who are on the front line to help, who is working uh, day to day to um, help those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Ah, Gabriel is here. Good afternoon from Tel Aviv. Good to see you online. Yeah, I haven't replied to you. Uh, Gabriel is a, a, a dear student from. Uh, well, he's from many places. Ah, uh. he's a Jew and he's from uh, Italy. Yeah, he's currently at Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Mm. Hope you're keeping well, Gabriel. Um, any questions? Mm. Any questions from the live audience? <laughs> so for those who join in halfway, I don't know how it's like whether you all start watching from the front or midway and whether you are able to like pull back to the front to watch uh, if you are not able to uh, you can re-watch after we finish and then you can watch the whole session ah okay Sam Sam Lim asked uh, wonder how do you differentiate lack of interest in in uh, <laughs> in, in uh, Hokkien we call it bochak versus using the Sikh wisdom hmm so uh, if you well you ask me so my, my take on it is uh, having a lack of interest that is indifference yeah uh, the the sick wisdom that I talk about is about prioritizing meaning that you you ask yourself what is truly important of course let's say there are, there are two subject matter A and B and when you sit back and you reflect on it you may find that perhaps A is not so important B is more crucial it doesn't mean, mean that A is not important it just means that it's less crucial to you important thing, you ask a very interesting point which is that just because A is not so crucial to you 
doesn't mean that A is not important to others. Uh. You, you understand what I mean? Yeah? Because if you think about it, uh, in life, there are many things that is important to us, but not to others. And similarly, vice versa. Right? Uh, so, um, we can't help if others think that we have lack of interest, but you have to ask yourself, which is more important? And perhaps if I can add on to your question, there's also the, 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 the issue of a uh, sense of responsibility and duty. Yeah. So if let's say, <laughs> oh dear, after this, then all those who watch this video on Monday, yeah, when you go to work or stay home, you know, work from home, and then your boss asks you to do something, then you sit back and think, hmm, Shifu says, must use the sick wisdom. Sick wisdom, ah, I shouldn't attend to this. Can or not? Can, you might get fired. Uh. <laughs> if you want to stay on to work, then you should fulfill your duties. You should, that's your responsibility. I mean, that's a TNC, right? Yeah, you sign up, you, you, you agree to commit uh, 9 to 10 hours of your of your day, yeah, for how many days a week to fulfill the, the duties and tasks discharged to you by your superior in the company yeah, to further whatever um, business commercial goal that the company has in mind. You, you sign on the dotted line. Uh. If after using the sick wisdom, you feel that mm, that's not so important, then you should tender. But don't tender and come back to me and say, oh, but I cannot pay my bills. Then, you, then what is your priority? Oh? Sufu cannot decide for you what is the, what is the uh, combination, you know? Yeah. I mean, after all, if you ask me, I'm, I'm someone who basically, this is more important. But you, whether, it's, whether this is the case for you, you have to decide for yourself. Hmm. Over the years, I have met different students and uh, today I, I see clearly that not everybody um, has, has the conditions to make that choice. While many do see that this is important, but they have already had prior commitment or existing commitment that doesn't allow them to just say, oh, you know what, I'm going to just go and hide in the mountain. Yeah. Uh, so you have to ask yourself which is which is which. Uh, so this is one case. Another case would be like um, at home, uh, you may have certain things that you think is important, but your wife may not think so. Your children may think otherwise. Yeah. Um, I think communication is important. Sharing uh, our own dreams and goals with one another is important. Yeah. Sharing this video to, with them is perhaps important. Then they can understand why you have this sick wisdom. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, but uh, I realized something. When we share with others, sometimes we forget, you know, that just because we share our ideas doesn't mean that people will accept, you know. So we must be ready that we share, but they don't agree. And at the same time, they have the right to disagree, but it doesn't mean that they can then expect you to change. <laughs> so there's many layers to this. Oh, uh, many layers to this. Mm. Okay, I hope uh, I answered that question. Mm. Anything else from Sam or others? Uh, Venerable Santi Boon. Eh? Oh, sorry, it's Vera. No, I thought it's Venerable. Then I look at the picture, it looks like a t shirt. Nah. <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon to all of you who just joined in. Uh, we are wrapping up soon. So if you have any questions, uh, I don't know if you have any questions apart from what has been shared. If you have, uh, feel free to post online. And it, if you have uh, some topics that is a bit more uh, extended, then I might reference it in the next uh, week's session yeah 
if you have any topics or any uh, discussion points that you would like to hear we can talk about it next week uh, and next week will be the AMA session ask me anything all right so <laughs> every week I have some individuals who who click on the laugh I icon yeah this week we have Tan Wang Che click on the laugh icon oh and at last week I also have one person who click on the angry icon <laughs> this week we have Lini Chan click on the angry icon <laughs> So interesting. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let me scroll through and see whether I miss out any uh, topics. Mm. Yeah, I think if you just come online and you refresh the page, right, you would basically see it from the current moment, more or less. Yeah, so. Uh, for those who just come in, uh, if you have the, if you want to watch the front part, uh, wait for the session to end in about five minutes time. Then you can rewatch from the start. Okay. Mm. Any questions from the live audience? Uh, no. Okay. So uh, I'm going to spend the next five minutes. Uh, I'd like to invite everybody to join me to do some uh, uh, chanting. I would like to dedicate the three sets of the Great Compassionate Mantra. Before we do the recitation, I want you to recollect a time where you help others selflessly, you care for others without any um, strings attached. Yeah? Uh, if you can do that, uh, if you can do that recollection, you'll find that as we um, help others selflessly, a different kind of joy arises in us. Uh, that kind of joy that is different from uh, the pursuit of worldly, uh, worldly things. Yeah? Uh, when we pers pursue worldly things, joy arises as well. But that kind of joy has strings attached. It has a friend that comes along with it, which is worldly suffering. Worldly joy and worldly suffering come as a pair. Worldly joy depends on gratifying our desire and when the object of desire is lost or has changed or our mind has changed, then in our mind, then worldly sorrow arise. Yeah? So uh, when we help others uh, sincerely, yeah, selflessly, the the joy that arises is different. Yeah, so I like you to to invite all of us to uh, bring to mind yeah, some moments in the past where we care for others, help others very selflessly, and in this way we connect closely with the mind of Guan Sin Pusa. Yeah, and with that, please join me to recite the Great Compassionate Mantra. For those who are not so familiar, you can recite Om Mani Padme Hum or Namo Tape Kwan Sin Pusa in your mind. No? Uh, ah, I just see the question from Ushnisha. Ah. <laughs> so, good to see you online. Uh, I will uh, share on the on your question next week. Thank you, thank you for posting your question. Oh. No.
พุทิสัทโธพอยโมหะสัทโธพอยโมหะจัลุนิจัยอันสัมปนัยหวานิสุตันนาตันเสียนโมสิเจลิตอิมงโอลิเอโพโลเจติสะปนะลันทโพนะโมนะลายจิงสุสิลิโมหะหวันโตสามิสะโพทัตโตสุปุโอสุอินสะโพสะโตนะโมโพสะโตนโมพเจโมหะตโตตัณฑิตาโมพลุสิลุจยติจยลุติอิสิลิโมหะพุทิสัตโตสัพพสัตโตโมไนโมไนโมสิโมสิลิตอินชิลุชิลุเจมังตุลุตุลุหัสสะยะติโมหะหัสสะยะติโมลายตอลายติลินิสะปะนัยเยชะนะเชนะโมโมหะโมนัยโมติลิสิสิสุนัสุนะอาลัยสัมหุนัยสะลิหัสสัมหัสสัมหุนัยสะยะฮุลูฮุลูฮวันไลฮุลูฮุลูสิริสาไลสาไลสิริสิริสุลูสุลูปุติเอปุติเอปตอเอปตอมิติลีเอนัยสิติริสาลินาพอยโมสัพโพสิตอเอสัพโพโมสิตอเอสัพโพสิตอเอสัพโพนัยสัพโพนัยสิงสัพโพโมนัยสัพโพสินาชงามุสีเอสัพโพสัพโพมหาสิตอเอสัพโพเจตินาสิตอเอสัพโพพัฒมาสิสิตอเอสัพโพนัยสิงสุขันชินัยสัพโพมาพาลิสันชินัยสัพโพนัมหันนัยตันนัยตันนัยเยนัมมาลีเอพาลสิริสุขันนัยสัพโพอันสิริตุขันตันนัยขันตุเอสัพโพนัมหันนัยตันนัยตันนัยเยนัมมาลีเอพาลสิริสุขันนัยปริสาราพายมาสาราพายมาเจลุนิจัยอันสัพปนัยขวัยสันนัยสินัมมาสิจิริตัยมาลีเอพาลสิริสุขันนัยทับปนัมมานัยสิสิริมาขันตุสัมมิสัพโพตระสุปุณณสิสัพโพสัพโพนัมมาพัสสะนัมมาพัจจิมาหัตุดันสุทานมาพัลุสิลุจัยเจ้าดีสิริมาปุริสัสัสัมมาในมาสิมาสิริตัยสิลุจิวเจมังตุลุตุลุหัสเสติมาหัสเสติมาในในติลินิสุขุนในชนะชนะมาโมหะมาในมาติลีสิสิชนะชนะไอสัมมุนัสสิวัสสะสัมมุนัสสิฮุลุฮุลุหวานัยฮุลุฮุลุสิริสานัยสานัยสิริสิริสุลุสุลุปุติเอปุติเอปตัยปตัยมิติลีนัยชิวติลีสรีนัพโอเอมาสัพโพสิตัยสัพโพมาสิตัยสัพโพสิตัยสุขุนัยสัพโพนัยชิวสัพโพมาณัยสัพโพสินัสงามุสีสัพโพสัพโพมหาสิตัยสัพโพเจตินาสิตัยสัพโพปัตตมัจจิสิตัยสัพโพนัยชิงสุขันชินัยสัพโพมาพาลิสันชินัยสัพโพนัมโมหันนัยตันัยตุนัยเยนัมโมลีเอปาลสิเรสุขุนัยสัพโพอันสิเรตุหันตุนัยหันตุเอสัพโพนัมโมหันนัยตันัยตุนัยเยนัมโมลีเอปาลสิเรสุขุนัยปุริสาราพายมาสาราพายมาเจลุนิจัยอันสัมปนัยหัยสุนันสนามาสิเจริตายมาลีเอปาลสิเรสุขุนันทับนามนัยชิสิริมาหันตุสัมเมสัพโพตระสุปนัสุสัพโพสัพโพนัมโมพัสสารนัมโมพัจจิมังหันตุดันสุทานมังพาลุสิลุจัยเจลุติสิริมาปุริสาสาสาโมนัยโมนัยมังสิมังสิริตายสิลุสิลุเจมังตุลุตุลุหัสเสติมาเสติมาในนัยติลินิสุขุนัยชนะชนะมังมหะมณัยมติลิเสเสชนะชนะไอสัมมนัยสริวัสสะสัมมนัยสิฮุลุฮุลุหวานัยฮุลุฮุลุสิริสานัยสานัยสิริสิริสุลุสุลุปุติเอปุติเอปตัยปตัยมิติลิเอนัยสิมิติลิสรินาพายมาสัพพสิตัยสัพพมาสิตัยสัพพสิตัยสุขุนัยสัพพนัยจินสัพพมา
ยน้อยสัพพสินัสงามุสีสัพพสัพพมหาสิโตสัพพเจตินาสิโตสัพพปัตตมัสสิโตสัพพนัยจิงจวันเจนัยสัพพมาปาลิสันเจนัยสัพพนัมหานัยตนัยตุนัยเยนัมมีเอปาลาสิเรสุหนัยสัพพอัสสิเดนตุหันตุนัยหันตุเย I'd like to extend dedication to all the medical professionals who are working uh, day and night to help with the patients, and also to dedicate merits to those who have perished, uh, especially the two uh, patients who have uh, recently perished in Singapore. Uh, to all beings who have perished during this period, may they be reborn in happy realm, in pure land, uh, and wherever they are, may they be in touch with the triple gem, to learn and practice the Buddha Dharma, and attain to final liberation in due time. For those who are recovering from the COVID-19, may they receive the suitable aid uh, and treatment, care, and may they find strength in the in this time. To overcome the virus, may all beings be well and happy. Sabe sata sukita hantu. Sadu sadu sadu. 愿消三障诸烦恼。愿得智慧真明了。不愿罪障悉消除。世世常行菩萨道。阿弥陀佛。起立